Hey guys, Casey Foster here from netcodeguides.com doing a demo review here for A. Lizo on his DE Mirage match. Um, what he says about his gameplay, he says, Hey there, Lizo here, a player looking to improve. As for T side, I typically am one of, I am not one of the first to go in as I have a hard time entry fragging. So I try to stay towards the middle slash back of the group when we decide to rush a site. I usually play for picks T side, then work the site closest to that pick. For T side, I am a very defensive player and will try to stay on a site for as long as possible, hoping to kill everyone that comes in. When I opposite T side, Mirage, I will go in. So this is um, a pre-conceived connotation of how you're going to play the game you have an idea of what you're going to do before you do it it's good to have a goal but it's bad to have that kind of mentality that you're going to play a game like this so like what you just typed up in this little message saying this is what i do and how i do it um, that doesn't really work too well in cs because everything is situational based with one thing happens, you can't just say that you're always going to do this. So, like, if A happens, you can't always say that B is going to happen or that you're going to do B. There's a thousands of different variations of something that can happen in the game. So, I would like for you to, like, get rid of that mentality and just try to adapt to whatever's going on in the game. So... Anyway, we're jumped, we've jumped into the demo here. You guys lost the first four rounds. This is the second gun round you guys had. This is the first thing uh, that I kind of wanted to point out um, that is g gameplay based. So you guys are in a 2v2 situation here. Bomb is down. You knew that one was CT spawn. That's why you're not peeking this guy um, very quickly. And you have a smoke and a nade. So you smoke the bomb. Now, this, I, I can understand why you th did this because you're like, oh, I want to go and grab the bomb in the smoke. But what happens is if you know there's somebody on the other side of the map and you throw a smoke that's close to you, what that does is that creates a wall between you and him. So you'll see you're going to throw the smoke and you're going to grab this bomb. So look at where the smoke is, like right next to you. Obviously, you're going to plant in the smoke, but what that does is that gives him a huge wall because you're now blocking off the part of the map where you could have been. And... He's now going to push up on you. Um, we'll let this round play out real quick. Um, obviously, he's going to kill you in the back because he is able to push up on you and get all this information as to where you're at. So the right play in that kind of situation would have been, since there was so much time, I think there was like 50 seconds left in the round, um, was to just smoke off spawn or throw that smoke a little bit deeper, which is going to have to force him through that smoke to come and try and kill you, try and see if you're pl actually planting the bomb or whatever. So... Like I said, 50 seconds left, that kind of situation. Fake planting is great. You can fake plant, you can force them out of their spot because they're going to try and kill you while you're planting the bomb unless they're actually playing the plant or playing for a retake. But generally speaking, at kind of um, this kind of level of CS, they're going to try and kill you when the bomb is planted because or planting because they're going to get a little excited. So you could have just thrown a little deeper smoke, fake planted, waited for a second. If he doesn't come through, fake plant again. You still have 40 seconds left. Um, you know, your ultimate goal is to try and kill one of these guys in this situation because they know the bomb is down and you have they have to come to defuse the bomb and kill you or kill you. Um, so try that in another, if you ever get into that kind of situation again, but just have that mentality that you have, you know, you have so much time on your hands, you have a piece of equipment, use that to your advantage. All right, and here we are on another gun round. And this is something you've actually been doing quite a bit, and it should, it should be kind of obvious, but a lot of people don't really do it. But anyway, you guys are here on another gun round. Um, you know this guy is CT spawn. So you know that there's 100% a guy CT spawn. So it's not, it shouldn't be any surprise to you that there's going to be a guy CT spawn when you go to throw this flash here. And he gets a good nade off on you, but easily could have killed you if he had was mediocre at the game. Um, this is what, like I said, you've been doing this a few times this game, and I figured I would just, uh, just say it now just to get it out of the way. But pretty much you don't want to peek to throw grenades. I see a lot of players do it. Um, even all the way up until, you know, Global Elite, or that's a decent level of matchmaking. A lot of players will peek to throw grenades. This is bad. It's bad because you're a free frag at the time. Um, <laughs> it, it's going to make you panic and do something stupid. Um, 
And you're in a situation here where you don't really need to do this and you don't actually really need to be forcing yourself to throw this flash. If there was a guy CT spawn, you know, your teammates were already going to address that guy. That's like the number one spot that everybody looks, so it's not actually super imperative that you throw a flash at this guy. Uh, it's actually really hard to flash him in that spot anyway because all he does is just runs into that corner and he doesn't get flashed and you can't get in his face quick enough to kill him while he's flashed. So it's actually just kind of a waste of a flash. But basically, don't throw a flash while peeking. Don't throw a nade while peeking. Don't throw a grenade while peeking. You want to throw stuff while you have cover. And if you don't have cover, you either find a place that does have cover to throw the flash or you don't throw the grenade. That's just all there is to it. So, you know, uh, try that in future games. You'll have much better success. All right, and here we are on another gun round. Really good pick on that dude in mid. That flash you threw actually really doesn't do a whole lot, but if there was a guy pushing mid, it would have flashed him. So good pick on the dude in mid. Um, you, I see you go and throw this smoke here on Cat, and you kind of just assume that it is blocking off Cat, and you get free fragged in the back pretty e easily. So that's just a small mistake that costed you a death and potentially the round. Not saying you would have won the round, but it, it potentially could have cost you the round if you would have got that kill on the dude in the connector. And that, that, that dude was smoked off on cat. You would have been in a 2v2 at that kind of situation. So um, this just goes to show that knowing good smokes is super important. That's why we have a lot of smokes in that code premium. A lot of flashes, a lot of Molotovs, a lot of grenades. Because this game is so equipment-based that knowing these smokes and flashes is going to help you dramatically. So if you would have known a better way to smoke that cat, obviously it's a really easy smoke to throw. Um, you just want to be th running a little bit further um, whilst throwing it off of the B sign if that's what you want to do. Or you could have just bounced it off the wall on the right and you could have blocked off cat. But um, that got you killed in a very easy situation. So try not to do that next time. All right, and here we are on an eco now. You hear all of them right about here. Actually, a few seconds earlier, sorry, I was fast forwarding. But you heard them all coming B. You're obviously on an eco round. It's very unlikely that you're gonna win the round. They've rushed B, you're solo B by yourself. Um, I'm not sure if you pay attention to radar too much, but you can if you would like. Um, it's, it's there to help you. You can see that the rest of your teammates are all on the other side of the map and you're in A5 on one at B bomb site or four on one at B bomb site, uh, but for you at the site, you don't know if there's five or four. Either way, um, fighting that guy in that kind of situation, probably not going to win. If you did win, you would have, I mean, that would have been okay to go four, four for four. But the better play in this kind of situation, hearing all of them solo B with a pistol, is to just run straight to Cat and play for the retake with your teammates. Obviously, it's an eco round, so the chances of you winning the round are less than if you <laughs> had guns. But... Um, in that kind of situation, just running away, staying alive, waiting for the retake is the absolute best, um, the best play for that scenario. And like I said, it's an eco round. You're probably not going to win the round. But what you could do is you could mess up the team's economy by running the cat, making them play in the site, basically not allowing them to leave the site. If they try to leave the site, you get exits or you do some damage or whatever. Um, but if the bomb blows up and kills them, some of them are going to lose their guns. So... Obviously, they've won a few rounds in a row. They've got their money on, but um, you know, still, it would have been a, a, a much more effective way to play that situation. All right, and here we are on is actually one of the last rounds that I'm going to comment on. <laughs> Good shot on that dude running out of a ramp with a nade in his hands. Um, that was something that you did earlier that I commented on, and you saw how easy it was to kill that dude with his grenade in the hands, in his hands. Uh, so you guys are in a 4-on-4 four four situation here. Your teammate is about to die in mid. And you've been playing this triple stack spot a lot um, this game. It's actually a really good spot as long as you guys have mid control. And this dude has just come right up connector through your smoke. And he's shooting you in the side. Obviously, you're going to die. Um, it, it, this, is, this is partly your teammates, but it's partly just your situational awareness. Um, I think your teammates kind of just tried to collapse on mid. Somebody got up connector. You you had a you 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 had some kind of call. Either they said it in game, or you saw somebody on radar. So that's why you smoked connector. Um, obviously, he just ran right through the smoke and got the kill. A better place to smoke if you think they're actually going to come up connector is just close in front of connector, because then that forces them outside of that little room right there where they have all kinds of cover. So he's going to get the kill here on you, and that's pretty much the last kill or the last like gunfight that you have, and you guys end up losing the match. So. This is, um, let me just uh, put 
So not a director yet. So this match, probably the guys were a little bit outside of your guys' rank. Maybe there were a few of them queued, and you get, they won this match pretty easily, even though you guys got eight or nine rounds or something. But I'm going to touch up on a few things here, and then I'm going to go into a server, and I'm going to explain a few things. Um, one of the things you need to work on is your aim, and you need to work on being aware as to where people are uh, are at so you say that you're not a good entry fragger and i could totally see why there have been lots of times in this demo where you've run into a site and you've seen people and you don't see them like like meaning you see them on your screen but you don't adjust your crosshair to like shoot at them or anything and you just are totally oblivious that they're there so that comes with obviously expecting where people are going to be being able to see on your screen i don't know if you're sitting too far or something um but it happened quite a few times where they were just standing open and you just didn't even see them. So um, situational awareness, knowing where they're at, knowing where people are going to be is a huge thing. Um, the next thing I'm going to talk about is your uh, aim. So like I said, you need to work on your aim. I'm going to go into a server and show you a few things that you can work on to help you improve your aim um, with how I've been seeing you play this match. There's definitely a few things you can do. And... Um, the next thing is playing off of your teammates. This is something I tell a lot of people at this kind of rank is you need to be playing based off where your teammates are playing. Um, so if your teammate is up close A ramp, you obviously don't need to be up close A ramp. You can be in a situation to play off of him and help complement his position and your position at the same time and, and increase your chances of winning that gunfight or winning that part of the map. So stick around. I'm going to jump into server real quick and we will get to the last part of this demo review. So here we are in a aim bots map. Um, it's made by this guy, Ulytical. I'll put the link in the description to this video for this map. You'll see a lot of pros using this on stream, warming up. Uh, Summit uses it, Steel uses it quite a bit. Um, not really who else, uh, maybe I think Daze has used it a few times. But anyway, what it does is you can control the bots with, um, you know, where they're at. You can choose, you know, them to AD, AD, AD. Um, you know, turn it off more or less, you know, see they strafe more, or you can have it just do one strafe each way. Uh, but anyway, what this is, is basically just aim practice. And what I saw you doing a lot was this, you were going like this, actually you were going, you were, you were bursting and then bursting and then bursting again, like in, in a very quick, quick concession where you can see your your first bullet was here and then the rest of your bullets were just way above it. So if this was a bad guy, you were going like this. So obviously you can see where the, the bullets are just way above their head. And basically what you were doing was you were shooting too quickly. You need to you need to shoot and then wait for your like recoil to come back down. So you can see you can see the first bullet was there, second bullet was there. You were doing this. You see how there's one here and then two and three and two and three? You were just shooting too quickly and you weren't giving your time or your recoil enough time to reset where you could shoot the guy, wait a second, and then your your crosshair is accurate again or your bullets are accurate again, meaning they were going in your crosshair. So your crosshair was on the bad guy while you were shooting, but your bullets were just landing way above him. So the best way to practice this is is just is literally, I mean, you don't even have to have them moving, is just literally practice shooting these guys while they're stopped with like, you know, two, two, three bullet bursts, starting at the head and pulling down. So even if you don't hit them in the head, you're going to hit them in the body and do some kind of damage. Um, this is this is imperative to being good at CS. You have to be able to counter the recoil. I don't know if you come from another game where recoil isn't really um, as important as it is in CS, but it is. Uh, the next thing is strafing and shooting. So you were you were strafing and then shooting and you weren't counter strafing your strafe. So this is it you've heard this you may have heard this term a lot in our in our aim videos, but it's called counter strafing. It's where you strafe to the right and then you hit A or the left strafe key basically quickly to stop yourself and it allows you to shoot quicker so you can evade the bad guy's bullets and then shoot them while your model may look like it's still moving, but basically it allows your it allows your bullets to be accurate because you've stopped moving. And it takes a little while to practice this, but it's it's why it's why everybody thinks like all the pros aim is a lot better than like the next best player or the, the players beneath them. And it's because the pros are 
pretty much perfect at counter strafing and stopping themselves and starting their movement again. So it does two things. It helps your aim because you're going to be stopped and then shooting, and then it will also evade the bad guy's bullets. So you'll see a lot of gunfights with pros where they are basically shooting back and forth and strafing like this. And the reason they're doing that is to evade the bad guy's bullets while waiting for the recoil to come back down. So I'd like to see you practice that and then practice it in a deathmatch. And you can do it in here and you can get used to what it feels like and then go jump into a deathmatch and try it there because then their people are going to be moving. Um, obviously, this isn't like real movement of like what somebody really does. But it's it's close enough. So you know you can practice it in here, and oh wow, my my FPS is really low because I'm recording right now. Um, you can practice it in here, but then go ahead and jump into a deathmatch server and just deathmatch your butt off. You know, go into a deathmatch server like twice a day and get like 150, 200 kills. You'll see Scream. He deathmatches for like 500 kills. He pretty much has the best aim in the game, and it's because he deathmatches so much, and he just gets insane one taps. So give that a shot. Once you have your aim good enough to just destroy everybody, um, you're gonna you're gonna have much better success. Even if you get yourself into a bad situation, like positionally wise, if your aim can get you out of that 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 bind that you're in, um, you know you're gonna you're gonna have much better success. So give it a shot. Try out this map and just give it um, give death matching a go. So hope this demo review um, fulfilled all of your dreams. Um, your match wasn't really the best match to commentate on because there were so many other things going on, like with your teammates and, um, you know, where people were dying out on the map. But there's a few things that you could definitely have improved on or you can improve on that will help you um, definitely rank up in matchmaking and be a better CS player. So hope you guys enjoyed this demo review. Let me know what you think in the comments below and uh, watch out for the next one, guys. Thanks.